Hello everybody, welcome back. Gadget Boy here. And today we're going to take a quick look at uh, one of these cute little plasma balls. Now this one is particularly neat because it's actually powered by USB. I was absolutely baffled when I saw a USB powered plasma ball because uh, I remember from my childhood when, when you bought one of these they cost like a hundred dollars and came with this massive wall wart that you'd plug in and the wall wart would get really hot and make a sinister buzzing noise and and then you'd get to play with your your plasma ball but uh, this actually for being char powered off of five volts let me just plug it in up here um, it provides a fairly surprising uh, and you probably can't see that at all so I'm just gonna turn this off and well that was brilliant it helps if I plug it into a power supply that uh, isn't going to get turned off when I cut the power to the lights but give me a second here as I bang around and reach for a different extension cord here so we'll just plug that into that one <clears throat> turn that back on you can't really see anything now. You can see some of the corona discharge, so I'm just going to kill this light. There we go. And you can see, you know, given that that's only being powered off of a 5 volt power supply, that's a rather startlingly good effect <clears throat> that you can see there. Now, you can do some fun things with these plasma balls. Um, I've got some very different little toys here. Uh, I'm actually going to reach over here and shut this light off too, just to give us a little extra illumination here. And then I'm gonna just pull up the brightness in nice grainy iPad -o vision. So the first thing we're gonna start with, <clears throat> this is just a little compact fluorescent tube. Now we can take this and bring it next to the plasma ball there, and as you can see, it rather gleefully lights up uh, due to the capacitive coupling from the energy going through the plasma ball there. So that's pretty neat. Um, don't do that with a CFL that you want to keep because sometimes the uh, high voltage feedback can destroy the circuitry that makes the CFL work. But I don't care if this dies. They're cheap at IKEA. So another thing we can play with, and this is a <coughs> This is the circuitry from a, a strobe light that I'll be taking to bits and explaining the, the inner workings of in another video. But if I bring this close, it should illuminate. You can kind of see uh, it sort of lights up with a bit of a bluish glow there from the xenon inside the, the lamp. It's um, not lighting up too brightly. That could be because it's uh, actually still part of the circuit here. Um, I wonder if I could... Oh, hey, look at that. I can unplug it. That should uh, give us a better effect on the, on the xenon lighting up there. Now you can kind of see the, the bluish glow going there. So that's an interesting thing. Now if you're willing to sacrifice them, uh, which I am, uh, sometimes you can even get an LED to light up. So that's a blue LED that I'm holding up to the the plasma ball, and you can see it glows when I bring it close to the, the glass there. <coughs> Pardon the frog in my throat. I'm uh, actually getting a bit sick. I hope it doesn't affect my uh, ability to record videos. And here's an ultraviolet LED, which you can kind of see lighting up there, but it's not coming up as brightly. <clears throat> here's one I kind of wanted to try. This is actually a halogen lamp. I don't know if it's going to do anything, because the halogen is actually pretty deep in there, but I'm kind of curious. I wish I had a, a different halogen lamp. I want to see if it would actually uh, light up the the gases inside the halogen lamp. <clears throat> now the only other thing I wanted to try, but I couldn't actually find the remaining ones, was this um, little, they call them 
neon tubes. It's a little indicator light you can use in uh, AC circuits. Uh, if I happen to find it, I'll add a little blurb at the end of the video. And the last thing I wanted to try was this glow powder. I wanted to see if it would actually uh, make the glow powder start to, to glow if you held it close, but it doesn't look like the energy is compatible with glow powder. <clears throat> so anyway, there's some interesting, neat stuff that you can do with a uh, little plasma ball lamp here. These things are really cool. I could sit and play with one of these for hours. Anyway, let's have a look at inside the thing. So let's just turn turn the lights back on here. And we'll just cut the power there and unplug it. Well, let's take it to bits. Let's shove that off to the side. Grab my trusty toolkit here. Looks like we've got uh, some nice big Phillips head screwdriver screws here. So we'll just uh, back these out real quick. This will be the first time I've actually taken one of these apart. Uh, I have an idea of what the circuitry would be in a mains powered one, but I'm rather eager to see how they power it off of a 5 volt USB power supply. <clears throat> so we'll have to see what happens here. So I'll just quickly unscrew these. Base oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Look at that. That is a <clears throat> rather surprisingly small circuit board. Well, let's see what we've got going inside here. All right. Let's just unscrew that. Unscrew that. A neat little ratcheting screwdriver. A neat, neat uh, kit that I bought at RP Electronics, which is a local store here in Burnaby that uh, really have a great... oh, that's cool. Interesting. Really have a great deal of respect for uh, for the guys over there. Um, they know their stuff and, and they sell good products. Um, oh, I really want to try to try to get that out of there, but it's held in rather quite firmly with a rubber gasket there and I don't want to crack the glass trying to get it off, but this globe is actually just one continuous, you can see in there that it's one <clears throat> continuous bulb. I thought that the uh, the discharge part of it and the inner parts of the bulb were, were two entirely different things, but it looks like this wire just gets shoved up inside there, and then the high voltage probably ends up capacitively coupling to the inside of the glass, um, and this will be full of argon or xenon or of some sort of uh, gas that lights up under under high voltage. Uh, probably argon because it's cheaper, um, or a mixture therein probably to get the uh, the different colors that you see, the purples and the reds and stuff. So what we have here is. A very simple circuit with a mysterious giant transformer here. <clears throat> um, some sort of transistor here. I can't really see the uh, can't see the numbers on it. <clears throat> but wow, this is really quite filthy. But I only spent twenty bucks on it, so I guess I can't complain. Anyway, so <clears throat> the basic gist, I, without knowing the pinout on this on this transformer, uh, I can't tell you exactly what's going on in the circuit, but I can give you the basic gist of how these work. Um, what they do is they use something called a flyback transformer, which has two windings on it. <clears throat> uh, one that charges when the transistor is active, and one that charges when the transistor is deactive or not active, rather. And so you'll get uh, one side of the flyback transformer charges up, the, the windings on it charge up, so they build up their magnetic field, and then at a point, the current uh, sets this transistor into 
uh, depending on, on how they have the circuit um, set up, it either closes the transistor or opens the transistor, cutting power to the primary, and then the secondary immediately charges up from the collapse of the magnetic field on the primary, and then begins to discharge. And so what, what happens is you get uh, an oscillating magnetic field that creates two sawtooth waves. In the primary, you get a waveform that looks like this. And then in the secondary, you get a waveform that looks like this. Now, <clears throat> on the, the output side of the transformer, both leads are attached to each other, so these two waveforms kind of collide to each collide with each other, and you get sort of a very, very, very messy sine wave at extremely high frequency. Um, without the proper measurement equipment, I couldn't tell you what the frequency is, but these little plasma ball trans uh, flyback transformers tend to run at about 20 to 22 kHz. So very, very, very high frequency uh, electricity coming out of uh, the DC power supply here. And the other effect the transformer has is stepping the voltage up from 5 volts to about, uh, I don't know, 15 to 25 k volts. Again, I don't have the uh, appropriate measuring equipment to get a, a properly salient reading on, on the voltages involved here. But that high voltage, high frequency uh, electricity current uh, gets capacitively coupled into the inside of this plasma ball and just begins to create a corona discharge through the the gas inside here and you get those little lightning bolts that we're used to and then when you touch it your skin becomes capacitively dis uh, coupled to the outside of the glass which provides a more attractive spot for that corona, corona discharge to go and so you touch it and all of the lightning bolts coalesce over to where you're touching it uh, because it's a more electrically attractive path. Um, so yes, that's basically what you've got here. Now, there's there's no diode on this thing. There's no sort of backflow protection. So I would strenuously recommend against plugging this into your computer USB power ports. Uh, if you buy one of these, because there's nothing protecting your computer from that high frequency, high voltage feedback uh, going into your computer's USB ports. And I can guarantee you, your computer is going to have absolutely no idea what to do with 20k volts, um, and it can it will cause all sorts of nasty repercussions uh, as that 20k volts runs rampant through your motherboard. So being as there's absolutely no isolation from, from the high voltage you're dealing with here, except for the isolation between the coils on the flyback transformer, and I wouldn't trust those to keep uh, this sort of high frequency voltage from feeding back through the circuit, uh, because you can get, you know, as you see, it capacitively couples through glass, so you'll get a skin effect and it might actually just tra travel right down, right down the insulation of the wire into your computer. So don't plug these into your USB ports uh, unless you don't care about uh, potentially damaging your computer. Just use a, a cheap dollar store 5-volt uh, brick, and then you don't have to worry about uh, ruining your, your super expensive computer. So anyway, I'm just going to put this back together. <clears throat> this was just sort of a exploratory teardown. There's no repair or autopsy or any... Uh, really exciting disassembly this time. I just wanted to show you guys this really neat plasma ball that I found uh, of all places at London Drugs for 20 bucks, which I thought was really cool because these things, uh, when I was young, used to be quite expensive. Uh, so I got to fill, fulfill a lifelong dream of uh, owning a plasma ball. Uh, 
by going to London Drugs the other day. So that's cool. And I'm just going to quickly reassemble this. Maybe. There we go. And just throw that on there. Line that up to the appropriate side there. Drop these in. I'm sure you guys are super excited to watch me putting it back together, because that's all sorts of exciting. But let's, let's throw the screws back in. <clears throat> and then I'll quickly go and see if I can find uh, one of those neon bulbs that I was speaking of earlier. I think I've got a reasonable inkling of where I should be able to find one. Um, if I manage to find one, I'll... Uh, come back in a few seconds and, and we'll see what it looks like uh, if it if it even does anything so there you have it just a quick exploration into how a plasma ball works I'll uh, see if I can afford a mains powered one a little down the road and we'll see if the uh, circuitry looks any different um, inside a mains powered one as opposed to a USB powered one so I'm going to go look for that uh, neon lamp. Uh, I'll be right back. All right, and we're back. I wasn't able to find a fresh neon, but I did find something from an old project I was working on that one of these days I'll finish. Um, but it's got a little neon bulb, and it actually... <clears throat> you can see it start to light up pretty much right away as I bring it close there with that orangish light. Um, doesn't seem to really make a difference if I touch it, but uh, you can see the gas is starting to ignite as I bring it close, but not touching. And then if I touch it, they get really bright at that one spot. So that's kind of interesting. It's not quite the effect I was hoping for, but yeah, that's kind of cool. I think my favorite thus far was the, the color that we got off of the... Uh, the strobe lamp here, the xenon strobe lamp. That's the sort of an eerie, bluish, almost ultraviolet glow there. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Um, if you liked the video, let me know in the comments below. Uh, ask me questions, I might get answers. Um, check out my Patreon, I'll put a link here, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.